What's up everybody? So I am excited about today's video because I'm gonna try to answer by far the most popular question we get, the one that everybody wants to know, and that's how to find a great storage investment. So how do I find a self-storage facility to buy, right? Now there's lots of different ways to go about finding deals, okay? Any real estate deal, but it's gotta be multi-dimensional. Now, I'll explain what that means here here in a second, but first I got to use my analogy. So anybody that listens to our podcast, Self Storage Income Podcast, you already know that I like to talk about being the bear. So how do you be the bear, okay? Now, let me give you the analogy so it first of all even makes sense. But I'm a fly fisherman because I'm an Idaho boy, and like all good Idaho boys, we should be fly fishermen. And when you're out fly fishing, you're standing on the bank of the river, right? So you're out trying to cast your line. You've got your fly on there. You're trying to get a fish to come in there and bite your line. You got to be in the right place. You got to be matching the hatch as we call it, right? And you're, it takes a little bit of luck and skill and you got to move around a lot. Well, you're out there fishing on the side and what does a grizzly bear do? A grizzly bear just walks out into the middle of the river, sits down and lets the fish jump into his mouth. Why? Because he's in the path of progress. The fish are just going straight to him. So in the world of finding deals, you want to be the bear. You don't want to be the fisherman, right? You want to just sit down and get fat and happy. So how do you be the bear? That is, you're putting yourself in the path of opportunity. And I look at this in three ways when uh, trying to find self-storage deals. The first by far one of the most important, is broker relations. I can't stress this enough. If you're not talking or working with brokers, you're just missing a huge part of the market and they should be your allies. So you need to have great relationships with brokers. But like all things, there's ways to go about this and ways to not go about this. My broker relations are very important to me and I work exclusively with brokers that understand me and have a good understanding of the market because my brokers know that when they produce a deal that I like and when we find a deal and we underwrite it together that I'm going to buy it so the relationship goes both ways but it's predicated on an understanding of what I want and what I'm looking for you don't want to waste brokers time right their time is valuable they have deals that they want to take out to the market they have buyers, right? And they have sellers. So if they're going to bring deals to you, then you got to make sure that first of all, they understand what you want. You're very clear about that and that you're getting ready and you have a way to close on deals. This can be big or small. It doesn't matter. This could be a 300,000 small storage facility or a $10 million storage facility. It doesn't matter. You need to make sure that you're very clear about the parameters and what you're looking for. You don't just go to them and say, hey, do you got any deals? And they're like, well, you know, we're seeing some stuff. I'll let you know. And then you get on a mailing list. That's not the right way to go about it. So the brokers that I work with, I've sat for hours, literally hours with them discussing the market. They are a wealth of information. You want them to be on your side, be on your team. And the better that relationship is, the more they're going to bring you deals. Brokers are looking out also for the sellers. If they think they're going to be burned, they're trying to protect the seller, which they should. So don't be a fly by night and don't jerk them around and don't waste their time. Develop good relationships. Be clear on what you want. Okay, that's number one. Number two is hunting. All right. So hunting is very specific. And I'm going to get a little more into this at the end of the video, but hunting is about being clear on what you want. So your parameters. Now, let's say for me, I'm looking for 60,000 square feet on a main road with over 30,000 in population. And I want that market to be growing and it doesn't need to be blowing up. Right. But I can't, it can't be shrinking or reducing. So you need to be very clear on two things, the market. Okay. So what is the market that the asset's going to be in? What does that market look like? The second thing that you need to be very clear on is what type of asset. When I got started, I was looking at very small deals in really small markets. And by really small markets, speaking of bears, like one of our first markets, there was literally more grizzly bears than people in that market. So I was going after small de deals that could be turned around because that's the money and the capital that we had that we were putting to work, 
right? Now, as we've kind of grown and we got more and more facilities, now we're over 1.2 million square feet in storage. That's change. I'm looking for larger markets, larger deals, but I'm still going off the same methodology in which that is a value add. Now, the markets may change. My strategy is the same, even though the assets change. These are all things you need to understand. So I'm looking for underperforming assets that I can buy that equal 60 plus thousand square feet in decent markets that have a diversity of economic uh, drivers. And that means employers, right? So where are the people coming from? Where's the capital coming from? I don't want to be concentrated in single source towns, right? I don't want to be in a logging town. And then the logging mill shuts down. The town's decimated and your assets worth nothing. So I look at risk and all these things, but I, first of all, I understand them. Okay. And I understand what I'm looking for. Then I go out and I'm directly searching for those and I'm making relationships with the owners. This is really important. We're going to talk later on about the long-term game, but building relationships with owners. So the third thing, the third thing is networking. I can't stress this enough. I'd say at this point, 40% of our deals have come from networking and partnering with others. Let me give you two examples. First example is networking. I'm out here. I'm making this YouTube video. I'm telling everybody what I like, what we do, where our strengths are, right? We had a gentleman that had a storage facility and the storage facility was severely undervalued. Now it was too big for him to take down, right? So he called us up and said, hey, would you like to partner on the deal? The reason he called us up is he knew who we were. He knew what we wanted and he knew our strategy. So he had an asset that fit into our model. If you're not networking, if you're not talking to people, you really can't be upset that nobody's bringing you opportunity. Like that doesn't make sense. So don't be guarded, get out there, go to your uh, local meetup groups, go to the national ones, get online, search the hashtag self storage investing, follow people that are in it, follow brokers and communicate with local owners and markets. So the SSA and the ISS are national storage associations, right? They have also local chapters. You can go to those local chapters. You can talk to the owners in the markets that you're looking at. They're a wealth of information because they're in those markets. This will help you grow out your base of people that you're networking with, but also you're building relationships with owners that may eventually come back and sell to you. So The key here is, is that you're doing all three, right? You're out networking, you're building relationships with brokers, you're out there hunting, building relationships with owners. You got to match up all three of these and you got to put yourself in the front of the opportunity. So the opportunity comes to you. Obviously it takes work, but it's not sitting down, wishing, praying, and hoping you're creating the right conditions. The bear still had to go sit in the middle of the river where there was going to be salmon, right? He knows. So do it. Find the right conditions. Put yourself in the front and opportunity will come. The key to finding deals consistently over the long term really is two things. It's documentation and following up. So you're going to be looking at facilities all over. You're trying to find which seller wants to sell to you. You're looking at the assets. You're trying to understand which ones are right for you. But this is largely a timing game and you have to be consistent over the long term. You have to be the one that owners are going to want to sell to. You have to be the one that brokers want to give the deal to. You have to be present. You have to be in front of them. They have to know who you are, what you're looking for. This is key. And you can get lost in this. So it's very important to be organized. And this can be done as easy as on an Excel spreadsheet. But you have to document. When I say document, you have to document the facilities, the locations, the owners, your conversations. Because it's all about being genuine right? You need to be genuine in what you're trying to do. So when you're talking to owners, be genuine on your purpose. Want to get, you need to get to understand them. You need to get to know them. When you're working with brokers, be genuine. Remember who they are. Remember what's going on. So document these things so you don't forget important events and important dates coming up. So then you can call and be on top of it, right? It needs to be natural. You need to be thinking of these people and it can't seem like you're scattered, This is really important because this is a people game, right? Whoever the brokers give deals to, whoever you're networking with, and they make that phone call to, 
it's going to be people that they like. It's going to be people that they want to work with. And you need to make sure that you are in the front or in that path, right, of opportunity. So documenting, Excel sheet, I use something called Monday. It works really good. I can keep all my notes. I can even do follow-up emails through it. There's a lot of different software systems that you can use. But once again, documenting location, addresses, name, who, events, what they said, timing, and keep this over the long term. This is your hit list. And you need to be following up with these people quarterly because you never know what's going to change. Let me give you an example. We had a facility that we wanted to purchase. And the person that we wanted to purchase it from was just absolutely determined he was never going to sell. But that was okay. He was in a market we liked. We liked him. We touched base every single quarter. Right? We'd go talk to him. We'd ask how his family was doing. We'd ask him things. We developed a relationship with that owner. Two years later, the owner had a health crisis. Who did they pick up and call? They picked up and they called us. They didn't call a broker. They didn't call anybody. They called us immediately. We went in and asked them what the price was and we closed the deal. They knew that we were going to be honest with them. They knew we had a relationship. They trusted us. We were upfront. We knew the asset. We knew the owner. We knew the circumstances. We could close on that deal and we could do it in confidence, right? So you can't control timing. So you just need to make sure that you're always out there. You're making those connections. So documenting, scheduling out when, who, what, where, why, this is important because it's a long-term gain. And as your funnel grows at the top through all your activities and your communication is streamlined, eventually it's going to become consistent. You're going to start consistently hitting deals through network, through broker relationships, or through your outreach. It'll become very standard and consistent, but it takes time. You got to build it up. So that's why it's so important to document everything and keep on top of all the people that you're meeting with. Don't get lost. Don't disappear. And then six months later, be expecting to have the deal of a lifetime and you're not getting anything and nobody's heard from you, right? You have to create the conditions of success. You have to create the conditions of opportunity. You got to be organized.